everything that I say is totally alleged, so please don't take it as fact. All right, everybody, you see this picture here? This was in People Magazine a few days ago. I saw that it was Harry and Meghan out to dinner when they were in New York City. Harry was speaking at the United Nations. But let's just jump right into it. Harry and Meghan were, of course, humiliated at the Platinum Jubilee when they got booed, but they have a brand new embarrassment headed their way. A new book called Revenge by British investigative reporter Tom Bauer. Word is that it doesn't offer a lot of fresh revelations about Harry and Meghan, but it does do a deep dive into the black holes that are their psyches. In this book, the couple are characterized as two very broken people stoking each other's rage, grievances, and delusions of grandeur, believing that they're rising even though they're rapidly falling. They wear their expulsion from the royal family like a badge of honor, but they want to cling on to their royal titles. Revenge tries to answer the question of how two privileged people got this way. From Meghan's very early life, she's always been a liar. Proof? She once talked about her memories of the Rodney King riots. She said, I remember rushing back home, seeing ash fall from the sky, and smelling the smoke, and seeing it bellow out of buildings, and seeing people run out of buildings, crying, bags, and looting. <laughs> Carrying bags and looting, I'm sorry. She might have seen this on TV, but her father, Thomas, said that he took Megan to Palm Springs and left her on day one of the riots, so she couldn't have actually seen any of this. Megan wanted nothing in her childhood except her mother, who was absent for most of it, doing her own thing, which is Megan speak for she was in prison for tax evasion. So Megan's father, who is estranged from her currently, and she claims is so awful, was her primary parent. As for how Megan became such a narcissist, maternal rejection at a formative age. Harry's excuse, of course, is the loss of his mother. He also claims the rage compounded by ranking as the royal spare. Prince Harry always complained that he's not the important one. His grief and rage manifested in substance abuse, depression, destroying the property of fellow students while he was at school, and his poor treatment of his ex-girlfriends Chelsea Davy and Cressida Bonus. The book says he lacked class, was unromantic, unserious, short-tempered, and imperious. Both the ladies found him ungenerous, and the book claims he is feckless towards women. It also claims, and this is a real shock, that he is quite dim. He struggled at Eton, even though he was given much help and leeway. He scraped by, passing his classes with barely a D. This makes one wonder why he would be invited to preach to world leaders at the UN last week in New York City. As for Meghan, much like her pal Ellen, the higher she climbs, the worse she treats other people. She lacks talent, charm, intelligence, or class. The only way she made, up, she made her way up is through marriage, and she lashes out at the very people who were paid to make her life easier. When she was a child, Megan said she dreamed of becoming the face of L'Oreal. That didn't happen, but she did get a job which she found rather disappointing. Spokesmodeling for a mid-level Canadian clothing chain. The frustration she felt she unleashed on the poor crew she was working with. The book also dishes on that infamous row with Kate Middleton. The one Megan told Oprah she wouldn't discuss except to say that Kate made her cry right before her wedding. But Megan, being such a bigger person, had accepted Kate's flowers and apology and simply couldn't bear to demonize her sister-in-law. However, the palace, so expert at playing the long game, has finally leaked their version of events to the author of the book. And, surprise, they say it was Bridezilla Megan, who was rumor long had it, called Kate's toddler Charlotte, lacking in the flower girl department, she made a hormonal postpartum Kate cry, and upon Kate later showing up at Megan's door, flowers in hand, not offering an apology so much as a warning to Megan to stop treating palace staff so terribly, Megan took Kate's flowers, threw them in the garbage, and slammed the door in the future queen's face. And there's more great stuff. 
Megan told Harry her Vanity Fair cover was pegged to her TV show, Suits, which was on basic cable, with absolutely nothing to do with their romance, even though the cover line of the story was, she's just wild about Harry. Serena Williams telling Megan's profiler that despite Megan's claims, they were not close friends. Princess Diana's sisters told Harry that despite what he saw in her, no, Megan was nothing at all like his mother. The longtime friends of both Harry and Megan, who learned the day of that they were invited to the wedding, but not the reception, unlike the Clooney's and Oprah, who were total strangers to the couple, the staffers, who fled from Meghan's employ in tears, even Prince William intervening and telling Harry that his wife's behavior was unacceptable, and Harry watching the crown and blabbing to a friend that his family and royal life in general is, quote, much worse than that. Harry and Meghan's hissy fits at the Jubilee, they desperately wanted to provide Netflix with actual royal content, yet they got kicked to the proverbial curb. All of this and Meghan and Harry still see themselves as the Obamas 2.0. If anything, this book ratifies the world's growing disregard for these two hypocrites, so divorced from reality that they surely believe their Netflix reality show or docu-series, as they call it, will elevate their brand rather than reveal it for the cynical, resentful, grasping en entity that it truly is. <laughs> Megan gripes, I gave up my entire life for this family. I was willing to do whatever it takes, but here we are. <laughs> this book does show that Harry and Megan can do one thing successfully, sink lower than anyone ever thought possible. <laughs> Well, thank you for watching, and please like, subscribe, comment, share, and I'll see you later. Bye.